past several years, the WFO name has been noticeably absent from the Niner line. The people have been asking, and Niners rejoice. It's back. 170 millimeters of travel out back, 180 up front, 29er wheels only, and ready to plow over anything. The entire WFO line comes with Niners RDO carbon frame as the starting point. They all feature Fox suspension. Now, starting with the two-star build, which comes in at 4,800 bucks, you're gonna get Fox performance suspension and an SX drivetrain. At the very high end, you're gonna get the X01 Eagle Axis build for 10,100. Obviously, that's going to have Fox factory suspension. Our test model came in with Fox factory suspension, an XG drivetrain, which prices out at 6950. Geometry on the WFO is, I would say, contemporary. It's not anything crazy, but it's not small or ridiculous by any means. Reach is 450 millimeters on our size medium test bike, 480 if you're a large. A 64 degree head angle in the low position, which is the position that the bike comes in. We have a 77 degree seat angle, and all sizes run a 433 millimeter chainstay. The WFO also uses a flip chip, which will adjust your head and seat angle by 0.7 degrees. It does ship in the low position, so when you flip it to steep, everything's gonna tighten up just a little bit, but that reach number will actually grow by a few millimeters too. So the perceived weight on our WFO was far below the actual weight, 33.4 pounds with pedals. But honestly, this bike feels much lighter on trail than the numbers would suggest. An overview of the WFO frame highlights a couple of pretty cool things. Starting at the back, we have some nice rubber chainstay protection. We've got ridges on here that help keep this thing nice and quiet. What's also nice, and we're seeing this more and more on bikes, is the shuttle guard on the down tube. There's little details, like the cable ports up front. They're subtle, smooth, and elegant. We really like that. Overall, the paint and finish quality of the Niner is excellent. It's super shiny. It's a nice color. You can also get it in like some super bright red. Now, you're gonna miss maybe a lot of those details because down here, there's a lot of action happening. We have our under rocker link. We've got this increased rib cage, which is supposed to help with stiffness and give more room for these gigantic X2 shocks. We've got our upper rocker link right here and hidden on the inside are flip chips, which is gonna be something that you're gonna wanna deal with in the shop because there's some very small parts. Also housed in here is a bridge to increase the stiffness of the WFO as you're getting rowdy. All right, so we've gotten into some of the tech details on the new WFO. Let's dig into how they spec'd it. 200 millimeter rotors, front and back. Our test bike came with Shimano XT brakes. We have an XT drivetrain. We've got i9 wheels on our test bike but these are not spec. These are what Niner had to send just because of availability issues, hashtag 2021. The bike will actually come with DT Swiss wheels. Wrapped around them, however, are Schwalbe's 29 by 2.6 inch tires. We've got a Hans Dampf in the rear and a Magic Mary up front. That's a lot of meat. Moving up, we have a Fox Factory X2 rear shock. Leading the charge, is our 180 millimeter travel Fox Factory 38. Holy Toledo, it's a lot of fork, which is good because this is a lot of bike. Because we did share this bike between two different testers, the air pressure on our Fox 38 was different between the two of us. For myself at 165 pounds, I ran 87 PSI. Now, something we did agree on was the clicker settings. Grizz did a little bit of a deep dive and was able to fine tune a nice compression setting for both the front and the rear. And that meant one click from fully open of the high speed compression and 10 clicks on the low speed compression. On the rebound side, we ran five clicks of low speed and two clicks of high speed. Now for our X2 rear, on the compression side of things, we ran both of them wide open. For rebound, on the high speed, we ran it seven clicks from fully open. And on the low speed, we ran it six clicks from fully open. Our 38 came equipped with one volume spacer inside. We didn't feel the need to add any more, but the fork did perform exactly as we expected. For the duration of this test, we had two different testers take the WFO to three different states and get it in all types of terrain. 
we were able to suss out where exactly the WFO excels best. Now, we're gonna start off and say it. Where does this bike perform? It's in the name. WFO means wide, flat, open. This bike wants to haul the mail. Doesn't matter. It wants to go as fast as possible down the steepest, chunkiest bits galore. Now, on the flat rolling terrain, it is going to keep its own. We were able to keep pace with some bikes that were much lighter as they cruised along some of the mellower grades of trail. If your idea of a good time is accessing big terrain in remote locations and then laying waste to everything in front of you, that's where the WFO is going to shine. And if there's one thing that this bike really surprised us with, it was its climbing prowess. We couldn't believe how this thing got up the grades. It didn't matter if it was loose, it didn't matter if it was chunky, ledgy, technical, difficult, or just a good old fashioned spin. The WFO scooted up everything. And not just for a big 170 29er. It got up the hill well for any kind of mountain bike. We couldn't believe it. Now, when it comes to the really, really nasty bits, this is what we like best about this bike. A bike this large usually doesn't have the word play in its designation. If you're reaching for a bike like this, you're not thinking to yourself, oh bro, I'm gonna go jib and have some good times. No, when you reach a bike like this, you're going out there to lay waste to your buddies and all the mountainside, all right? This is what we would call a plow bike, but it's not sluggish or kind of a pig in any way. What we're saying is that when it comes to square edge hits and really big stuff, you can kind of just lay back and let the WFO do its thing. If you've got natural big fall away booters or really steep sections, you're gonna cackle with delight as those things just disappear underneath you. You can lean back and just kind of let the G's take you over, or you can push in and just let it eat. As we say here on Vital, what's the bottom line? And who is this bike for? Well, if when you reach for your bike, you've got big things in mind with big days, the WFO is here for you. This bike is best suited for high speeds in wide open country, as any long travel 29er should be. Now, Couple that with the fact that we were absolutely floored with its climbing prowess, and you have a mean machine on your hands. If you want to get into the deep dive, learn more about the technical details, and read the full review, head over to vitalmtb.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content just like this. And until next time, go out and ride your bike.